forevermore and nevermore. Heaven Letter Number 5727 July 30th, 2016 Forever Forevermore Timelessness could be seen as stretching out longer than forevermore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Quoth the raven, as if there is loss, and that's it. In one sense, loss cannot exist ever because, in truth, there is nothing held, nothing owned, nothing real to tug at at all. How can there be loss when nothing was? Yet, of course, there is much that is held as true when it isn't even partially true. It is well imagined, however. Mirages are believed in. There are pyres of mirages in life that go up in smoke. I made hands for holding, even as there is nothing for hands to hold on to. It is the mind that grasps. It is the heart that lets go. All this is seen as tragic because of ideas held on to. My children believe that the life in the world is true. You, my children, believe the world is concrete and very real. You, my children, give allegiance to the world. You may say you do not love life on earth, and yet you want to keep it forever. You would like to ride the rails of life forevermore. You disfavor nevermore. Life is forever, nevertheless. There is no duration to life. Life on another plane is still life. Life is infinite. Life is eternal. Yet the word forevermore speaks of time. The word nevermore speaks of absence of time which supports the idea of time. The word timelessness attempts to speak of time's non-existence, yet how can words defray that which never was? Words are ideas. Ideas do not always serve. Words are birds in flight. Words will not stay still. Words are elusive. Words are, in the final analysis, wordless. They are only words, and yet words are delicious to you, and it is a universal human requisite to speak. Babies babble and make sounds and then make words to the delight of their mamas and papas. When you come right down to it, what is anything in world life but a passing myth? You live life on the go. You take off. In truth, you sit still on a mountaintop. We could say that all of life on earth is a kind of fervent activity, and rest and sleep also exist. Could life on earth itself be some kind of unearthly span? Of course, you talk to yourself. You may even speak in your sleep. You seek to know what's going on when all the seeming goings on, all the hilarity and all the sadness, are ripples in a pond. There is nothing really going on, and there is really no place where something going on can be. Understandably, you would like to deny this. Something has to be going on, you say, because you are happy or not happy, sad or not sad. You find yourself in different aspects of life, yet you are neither here nor there. Life on earth is inexplicable. Life sings many songs, and you are eager to join in. You want this episode to be in time consciousness and out of this world at the same time. You hop back and forth from truth to consequences, as it were. You think about your experience of life on earth as momentous. It is momentous to you. You make a hullabaloo of it. You sign your name to it. You may not fully want it, nor do you want to fully give it up. Meanwhile, this life on earth is a flash in the pan. If time did exist, in the same moment, you take life seriously as if, as if, there were no infinite eternity or eternal infinity. Channeled by Gloria Wendroff. HeavenLetters.org